I am connecting heart to heart. This topic today is very close to my walk and I'm excited to share some thoughts with you. Good morning. Hey, beautiful souls. Just going to clear the energies and then talk to you about emotional attachments to food. Thank you for resonating. I particularly want to thank my YouTube followers. That seems to be taking off. Um, my prayers are being answered and you guys are starting to resonate and hear me and I'm eternally grateful for that. I just see if we don't heal ourselves, we cannot possibly start to heal this earth. Good morning. I love you. How are you all? And we do that with vibrational energies. So I wanted to talk to you about security and reflect back just in your mind's eye to your upbringing as a child in the family unit. And good morning, Gorgie. Uh, it's so good to see you again. Um, security. What made you feel safe or unsafe as a child? Now, we're talking some very important points here that you may not realize are roots that stream into everything that you do and say later on as an adult. You may not know this, but if your basic needs aren't provided under the age of five, you have very, very high stats for struggling in certain areas. And one of the areas that I observe in myself and in a lot of the clients that come to me is food attachments. This feeling of shame, guilt, uh, this cycle of overeating, binge eating, they call it, and then restricting yourself because you see food as your enemy. But vibrationally, this is not serving us. We are what we eat. But there's a whole lot of governmental, low vibrational beings that are ruling this realm that know these things. And are you what you eat or are you the energy that you're putting into the food that you eat? When you think about matter all as vibrational particles, there are two streams to that. I want to see if I can dive into it. I've got three pages of notes that we're channeling in this morning and I'm hoping that it sort of comes out eloquently. You never know with me. Uh, hey, anyway, but I do my best. Here we go. So as a young child, you've got these things that need to be met. I think there are 11 things. Affection. Yeah, that's number one, actually. It shapes brain development. We see in orphanages, etc. If a child isn't cuddled when they're little, even though they're provided with their other basic needs, they'll die because skin, skin to skin, is the biggest organ. That's why it's advised now, the opposite to what the um, medical system was telling you when, for example, when I gave birth, they'd straight away take the baby away from you and clean the baby up. But you're meant to hold and cuddle and, and skin to skin, mother to baby, hold this baby and, and allow that baby to feel nurtured. It helps conquer fear for entering into this lower vibration reality. Yeah? The spirit's entering into a body and then enter, entering into a very low vibrational plane. The second thing that uh, needs to be met is... Um, Nutrition. Okay, so we think about nutrition as food, right? There's a big uh, governmental thing about giving your kids breakfast and eating three meals a day. Three meals a day is actually, in my opinion, overeating as an adult. But as a child, yeah, it doesn't matter if you give a meal. It, it matters what's in that meal. So if you're giving them processed foods or manufactured things, and remember that the manufacturers back the advertising for the governmental studies, their tummies might be full, they might feel satiated, but they're not getting what they need for their brain. They need minerals, they need vitamins. Think about nature, right? Where we breathe out and the tree takes and gives back. And it's the same with plant foods when we're eating them. We are what we eat on a matter state, but also on a light state, which is affecting another type of field. The two fields that I spoke about that are also part of your body, the mental and the light body. So the emotional body, I, I link in emotions to light. That's why I'm talking about the nervous system every single day. You're an electrical being. So very interestingly, I'm off tangent here, but 
whatever. Um, in a couple of sessions recently, I had a plant come in and talk to me. And I realized that I'm hitting into a different wave, a different, the ancients used to have this happen, but I was quite surprised that it was happening to me. But Basil presented herself. She told me she was a she, and she told me that that client needed Basil. Gosh, this is so fascinating because as soon as I mentioned it to the client, the client was like, oh my goodness, I was about to put basil on my breakfast this morning and I didn't because I was lazy to go out into the garden, etc. But plants actually are sentient beings. Think about uh, plants giving us light, especially green plants, right? Yep, those, those green plants are feeding our light bodies energetically. So not only are you what you eat, but you are the vibration that you pop into things. And think about children like they hate green food, right? I hate, I don't want to eat my greens. I'll eat everything but the greens. It's a vibrational energy. And and uh, systematically, I think we've been programmed to um, teach that greens aren't good, you know, but greens make us strong. Greens actually lift our vibration. They lift the heart field um, and they do so much to the cell. Now, cell is your prison state. Okay, so nutrition, yes, it influences your brain development and, and disease. Now, disease takes a root in your energetic field from a very young age. And if you keep feeding it that same vibration, then that's how it falls in and, and happens within your organs and within the cellular structure. Remember, we spoke about cancer being a very low va vibrational cell, um, but if you are topping the energy in the room, in the house, which is your body, uh, there, there's so much that we can do holistically to help, um, and that's on you. But let's shift out the emotion that's attracting the low vibrational stuff, and I'll keep I'll keep talking into that. So quickly, the other things that need to be provided for mums and dads, if you're listening, uh, safety, obviously, a lot of us don't. I did a healing session yesterday. It was powerful in that I've never felt safe at home. And in the session, it came up energetically for me. I completely and utterly was able to get out of the mental and just listen to the spirit. And my spirit was saying to me that I didn't feel comfortable in my body. And that's very interesting because it's the body that anchors in the light. So that was a beautiful thing to process with tears. So yeah, it's fractal. So if you grew up in a home where you didn't feel safe, you might transmute that into your cellular state and you may not be feeling comfortable being you. And yet you're so magnificent. You were chosen to anchor the light in. Um, okay, so then we've got healthcare, hygiene, they're fairly obvious um, to make a child feel safe, sensory stimulation, and we're using the five senses. And remember, if you're developing the five senses as strengths before age five, you will be able to utilize them as an adult to anchor in. Uh, in my client sessions, I ask them to use the power of visualization and capture a higher state of thinking using the five senses. It's so, so powerful. I'll ask them, what can you smell? What can you taste? What can you feel? And what's your intuition saying? And, and so on and so on. You can practice this in your own meditations. It helps you pull something in to matter state. So can you see as a child, we're working as an adult in a mirrored state? But first of all, we need to shift out what happened to us when we were little. And it's nobody's fault. Our parents grew up like this too. It's systematic programming. We're, I think we're at the bottom of the barrel, yeah, vibrationally speaking. Okay, then we have um, home. You need to feel safe. A child needs to feel safe living in a home that is um, not just comfortable, but clean, uh, feel secure and peaceful. It, uh, how can you know that trauma is in epigenetics of your child, for example? They may be prone to having nightmares. They may be prone to uh, seeing spirits coming to them at night. These types of things are really, really common. And yet not many people speak about it for fear of being judged. 
and boy, are they in systematic groups. So if you are or you have a child that's struggling with that, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to help you. You don't have to suffer it. Sometimes a clearing of the DNA, a clearing of what's vibrating within the bones can help that shift rather quickly. And then we've got rest and play. So we get into manifestation stuff as an adult and you need to relearn how to play. But in order to learn how to play, in order to pull something into matter state, you have to shift out those fear roots that are entrapments actually, that happened before, usually from zero to seven. Uh, and then the last thing that a child needs is regular movement. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. Energy has to move. If energy's stuck, and this is emotionally speaking, and physically speaking, you're always going to feel better. You're going to lift into a higher brainwave state when you're moving, when you're on the move. So can you see systematically in this governmental uh, circumstances at the moment that we're all encouraged to have such a sedentary lifestyle? We're sitting at a desk and for entertainment, we're sitting in front of the altar, the TV. It's black box Saturnalia thinking. Saturn within the body is right at the tailbone, if you didn't know. And so we're right down there. Think about it. I talk about it as big dick energy, but it's holding you entrapped in this black cube. That's another topic for another day and I'd love to dive into that with you. DM me if you're interested. So your body is actually the cube and you fold up. So which vibration are you at? Crystalline state or darkness? So the black Saturn cube links into black sun worship. It's very interesting and a lot of our systems worship that particular um, egregore. Okay. So restrained eating links directly and affects self-esteem. I struggled with really low self-esteem as a child and I recognize it was because I was programmed to see food as the enemy. It wasn't, um, you know, and that comes with dysfunction. A lot of guys that come to me might be struggling in their relationships and they might have picked this kind of trophy gorgeous girl and worked out that she has a lot of issues and a lot of those issues around uh, are around identity who I really am and that that is rooted deeply within the cellular level through um, how that that beautiful soul grew up and a lot of that turns into food issues be it anorexia or overeating or constant will of um, sorry about Kaiser he's just he's got issues you know, during that COVID season as a puppy, he was not socialized because we weren't here. We were locked up overseas. I'll just wait for him to stop barking at the dog dogs. I'm very patient or I'm learning to be. Thank you for your patience too. All right. Uh, so yeah, the, the, Vanity would come from a fear of not being loved or not being accepted. And that's often revolving around food. You know, we need a label. And yet uh, the low vibrational state that that entrapment's in would actually attract one to the wrong foods or no food at all. So there's this swing of, um, you know, starving yourself and then binging for stuff that's right in front of you, that's available, that you've been programmed to grab because it's quick, it tastes good, it's often sugary, sweet or salty, and that's the quick fix. And yet that isn't sustainable. It actually, it actually affects the blood levels in a worse way. So you have a big spike and then you drop down and you feel even more depressed or more alone within your self how can you work on this? If you can observe this type of behavior within yourself, I'd love you to just be honest, raw and true and start a food journal. This is what I have clients do, not just write down what they eat. You know, somebody that's focused on losing weight might obsess about that little food journal, but I want you to write down how I'm feeling and be really truthful with yourself and reflect back to uh, the younger years and how you were growing up. Were you rewarded with food uh, when you were being naughty or told to be quite naughty? No child's naughty, honestly. It's, these are words. We're stuck in this way of expressing ourselves. But were you silenced with food? Were, was food um, restricted? Was your fridge locked? 
I've had a lot of clients that suffered with that, that, you know, as you're growing as a child, you get really hungry and, um, and the fridge was locked or the disciplinary things were all done around food. And this can really set an emotional route where then they're feeling not loved, not accepted, and it needs to be processed. Um, so yeah, restrained eating does link directly to low self-esteem I've observed. Um, it also leads into stress, anxiety and depression. So let's push that into collective um, control and manipulation. If we know this is happening in a, a, a micro state, surely those that know this can have it amplify in a, a micro macro, got it back to front. Anyway, you know, in a collective state, uh, they food scarcity is being presented at the moment and spirits shown me that we shouldn't hoard food because that's greed energy. I, I loved this when I lived in Asia. Nobody shops in a big supermarket like they do in the West. We, we are chained to our desks and this busy lifestyle that we've got has made us think that we've got to shop for a month and throw it all in the pantry. And none of that's live food, by the way. Um, when I lived in Asia, we just shop each day for what we needed. And this is more in line and attuned, I feel, with flowing with the spirit for being provided for each day. Give gratitude for the food you have and the energy that that food's taking on is going to be happier, more joyful, more loving and you're going to be cooking from scratch as opposed to having stuff sitting in a package in the pantry for six months. That's technically not food, it's something that's been given to you as food or sold to you as food, but it's not. It's greed energy from those corporations. So corp, corpse, corporation, corpus Christi, who's ruling this world? It's low, vibra low vibrational beings that maybe don't like you so much and know that you are trapped in this energy off the back of those two world wars uh, epigenetically that you are you've got we've all got a little bit of issue with food so um, yeah I've got a couple of other things or a lot of other things I'd like to talk into so my question is uh, are you mentally restricting your relationship with food because a live food is sentient are you what energy are you giving that food before you eat it because you're co-creating your existence so if you're sitting there with a beautiful plate of freshly cooked food that's been made by love even by somebody else and gifted to you if you think about that with guilt energy that food is going to pick up on your vibrational energy and you're going to ingest it this is what we're talking about when we i am what i eat and I reiterate, it's not just food, it's emotional because emotions are what creates the wave. So even if somebody gave you, if somebody's stingy, like think of yourself on a date and somebody really didn't want to pay for your dinner, but they were into you. So that's not a nice energy, right? You can feel it. But if they paid for you, if I blessed that food and I gave that food love, I could shift that energy because I am a higher vibrational being. Um, no one wants to eat a meal from a stingy person, right? Be generous if we get what we give. And so sometimes those um, those things are, you know, somebody's wanting something else. It's manipulative energy and food takes on that vibration. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about changing your mantra over food if you're struggling in this area and lots and lots of people do um, this is how the diet industries got incredibly wealthy they know this cycle see the word die in diet and at the end is the t energy blocker that i've spoken to you about so you put the tent peg at the end of a word and it blocks a vibration so they've called it diet in order to manipulate actually. So the cycle of diet, I don't want any of you to ever, ever do a diet again. A diet is giving yourself death energy. Um, at the gym once I met a beautiful girl and she was working out so much. She was on restricted foods. Uh, she was doing a really great job, but she wasn't dropping the weight. And spirit said to me uh, that I should just talk to her and befriend her. I started working out with her and 
in a, a few short months, I think it was about four months, she dropped something like 30 kilos by working out less and putting in the principles that I gently taught her into working out for the right reason, eating for the right reason, giving it all love energy. I, I am loving, I am love, therefore I work out because I feel good. You're changing the mantra. I am love, therefore I'm, I'm giving my food blessed energy. I'm giving it amazing, awesome light energy. I'm reactivating the cells within the vibration of everything that I'm eating. Of course, I taught her to avoid toxic things. They're simple like sugars and seed oils, um, but a restrictive mindset in saying, oh, I'm a spiritual being. I should never have those things. Like I'll go out with you. And if you gave me an ice cream, I'd gobble it up in a heartbeat because I recognize that I am the higher vibration. I can shift the molecular structure of the vibration within that food. But what is your day-to-day -day eating journaling looking like? Is it alive? Is it alive like you? Or are you running to something that's a little more dead? Are we matching the vibration of the corporation and we're in corp state? This is a zombie apocalypse that they show you in those horror movies, I think. Um, yeah, we are the walking dead if we're not healing our emotional state. So reframe your relationship with food and process what happened as a child to cause that root of fear. It's all a fear root. Fear of not having enough. Therefore, I will... Try to exert control over what I'm eating and it comes from what I'm thinking. It comes from the mental body. So if this chat resonates with you, you're not alone. There are so many of us that have struggled with, I see this as psychological warfare actually. It's greed energy because surely the big multinationals know that they can manipulate you as a spiritual being in order to buy, shop, stockpile, Look at what happened during COVID. Everyone went crazy in Australia stockpiling toilet paper. It's this place of lack. I haven't got enough, therefore I will get go and get it, go and get it. It's your nervous system's damaged. You need to calm your nervous system down, find where that got in, do your forgiveness prayers, cut energies with it and trust the higher source. It's beautiful, actually. It's a very simple process to get back on the bandwagon and climb upward. Uh, you're not in a state of lack ever if you know who you truly are. You were born to manifest and, and lift the vibration in other people's foods. So if you know this as a spiritual being, you can do it intentionally. Whatever you cook, you can sing into, you can bless it. You can. I do it with my water as well. You are a light being. You can shine over anything. You are the living word. You are, the Christ is within. So if the corporations know that the Christ is within you, it's, it's way, well way to their advantage to make sure that you don't climb up that energetic ladder and start shining on other things because it's collapsing. It's collapsing the old programming. Um, okay, so this is the time that will lead you and step closer to breaking free from this cycle. Sorry, I just uh, couldn't even read my own writing there. This is why humanity are attached to all those holy days. You know, these holy days that are dangled at you like a carrot by the church system. We're emotionally attached to the food and the energy that we receive from our families. So I, I know we spoke around Christmas time, how hard that season is for a lot of people. It's because when you're in the matrix programming, you think that that's everything. You're all about the consumerism, about the overeating, and you're all about picking yourself up with some joy energy because maybe you're not holding enough for each day. Every day is a holy day when you know who you are as a spiritual being. So celebrate every single day. This is mindfulness. I want you to um, think about eating now with stress relief. Are we trying to stuff down our emotions? Are we overcompensating for what's happening externally, giving power to somebody that's lower vibrational or something that we saw on TV that made us afraid and we're trying to squash it down? Today, instead of eating, 
Christ said to fast, yeah, in order to find, just clear the belly with fasting. Fasting on a cellular structure makes the cells vibrate faster. Fasting can look different for you or for me. Uh, fasting can be whatever the spirit leads you into, but fasting will also help you shift out parasites because I believe these entities require parasites or a host within your body. So if you if you're struggling on this cycle and you need some help, please reach out. I would love to assist you today. I'd like to give fifty percent off to a person that's stuck with eating issues uh, for coaching sessions online. Uh, reach out, DM me. I'll be so honoured to work with you. And I I sympathise because I've struggled this walk. It's a very hard thing to break. With any addiction, you can often remove the addiction. So if you're addicted to alcohol, for example, you can take yourself out of that environmentally. But when you struggle with food, that's virtually impossible. So just a tiny fast with some accountability and prayers, maybe some frequencies over you to help you, um, will maybe help you find the clarity to work with spirit as opposed to working with flesh that is vibrating at a state that traumatized you. I love you and I hope this resonated and thank you for all of the messages. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments if this is hitting home for you. Did you feel safe with food growing up? And are you still a little bit trapped in that cycle of something happens, shit hits fan and you go running for something that's not good for you? Let me know. Love you. Bye.